Hello, everyone. Let's see. Let's get my stuff started. Sylvia, Vito claims what he's drinking is a salsa. What's in that glass? Uh, <laughs> water. Good job. We have a drug and alcohol free workplace, people. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Okay, I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to get it. All right. We have a quorum, Mary. Uh, we do not have it yet. Okay. I think three, and so I know Jason's not going to be here, and Susan's not going to be here. But um, Alan from Alan. So as soon as okay. Alan's here, that would make four. So we'd be okay. Uh, who else were we missing? Ooh, look at you. It's like uh, that's it. Just Alan, Susan, and Jason. Okay. Yeah. Alan usually comes squeaking. Oh, there he is. There, yep. Look at Alan. Everybody's got a good background today. Oh, yeah. that's, the deal. that's great. All right. You want to get started, Mary? Uh, Nikki will get us started with the agenda. Nikki, do you want to post the agenda, please? Sometimes there's a little bit of a delay when you have a bunch of people and she has it on um, live. We're live, too, just so you all know. We're live on YouTube. <laughs> Oh, there we go. All right. I'd like to call the meeting for the Lakewood Parks and Rec Advisory Board to order uh, for October 27th. Uh, let's see, Jason is excused. Uh, Sylvia is here. Alan is here. Susan is excused and Michael. Has everybody had a chance to read the minutes and can I have acceptance of the minutes? I have and I move to accept them as, uh, as written. Good, Michael. Okay, good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All in favor. Uh, next, any public comment, Mary? No public comments have been submitted. Okay, uh, new business. Uh, recognize that the Eagle Scout, Scout Project, Alex Thomason, is here and he's going to do a presentation. Hello. Hi, Alex. Welcome. Um, yeah, I am Alex Thomason and I'm going to present. Okay, Alex, I think Nikki's going to allow you to share your screen. Do you know how to do that? Um, yeah. Okay.
So Alexander, did you hit the green button at the bottom that says share screen? Yeah, no, it's just um, this computer is having uh, privacy problems. Okay. I, I can share it if you want, if you just want to tell me when to click to the next screen. Um, yeah, I think that'd be best. Okay, so um, I am proposing an Eagle project. As you know, my name is Alexander Thomason. I'm a Life Scout Troop 436. Um, I was put in contact with Mary Dodsworth. That's how this uh, Eagle project started. And the project itself would consist of removing the current Port Stillicum Cemetery sign and replacing it with a new one. Uh, next slide, please. So I'd like to start off with the current signage that's there. There's um, some noticeable problems with it. Uh, I've listed them. It's not securely anchored in the ground. Uh, the wood is getting frail. Uh, as you can see from the picture, there's a lot of moss and lichen on it. Uh, the sign is susceptible to vandalism. It's not, it's not terribly easy to clean any stains or paint from it. And the lettering itself is pretty faded. Um, Next, yeah, you can see what I mean here. It's um, the left one is when you're driving in uh, from the main entrance to the uh, the dog park, and it's really hard to see. Uh, the right one is um, when you're driving out, when you're exiting the park. Next slide. So the proposal for the new sign would be two posts made from 12 uh, foot long four by sixes. We're going to cement them four feet into the ground and the posts themselves would be spaced uh, five feet apart from their inner edge. There would be five feet between the posts themselves. Uh, there would be a solid uh, black or wrought iron metalwork arch that states the name of the cemetery in white lettering. And the years that the cemetery was in operation would be attached or engraved into the posts themselves. And the numbers would be uh, black. Around the base of the posts, um, there would be aggregate stonework that would be similar to the existing monument that's already there, the pyramid of stones and, and mortar. And that would be, uh, it would rise about two feet up from the ground. At the right, you can see a crude drawing of what it should look like. Next slide. Uh, the materials, uh, it would be fairly simple. Uh, there would be an ironwork archway two four by six uh, posts, uh, a couple bags of concrete mix, some some stones uh, like um, like river stones, mortar and uh, the hardware to set the sign in place. I budgeted everything. The arch comes out to about, yeah, the arch comes to eighteen uh, hundred dollars. Um, the uh, other materials are fairly cheap from where I'm getting them, which is, I think, Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, so it all works within the, the budget, 
which is being given. Next slide. Uh, the timeline from, it's a framework where this would all take place. A um, Chris from Pretty uh, Gritty Tours uh, stated that the metalwork for the sign would be ready uh, by the end of November, if the sign gets ordered by the end of October. And for the installation of the sign itself, uh, I estimate it would take a team of five, five scouts, uh, two weekends to accomplish the project. So below you can see one weekend would be for the old sign to be removed and for the new sign to be assembled and secured in the ground. And the second weekend would be um, putting in the stonework and uh, really any finishing touches that we missed from the first weekend, which would uh, most likely just be the lettering on the post themselves. We'd probably have to blacken them, but uh, yeah. Um, I was uh, made aware of that I would have to have a plan for kind of keeping all the scouts safe from COVID. Um, so there is a plan in place. Uh, I figure that it would be the scouts would volunteer and they'd be assigned to uh, shifts. It would work on a shift by shift basis. They'd be cycled in and out, uh, likely on an hourly rate. They would, um, we would supply um, sanitizer, masks if they needed it, and, and, oh yeah, and gloves. We would, we would give them um, suitable work gloves. Um, so, and most importantly, we would keep everyone uh, sort of spread out so that we ensure safe social distancing. Uh, anything else, Alex? Not, I, nothing comes to mind, no. I have a question. Uh, Alex, do you really think that doing that work in shifts will get it done? I mean, you get five scouts working one of the projects. How, how are you going to do oh, that? Oh, yeah, I should have been uh, more clear. Uh, the team would be a maximum of five scouts. There would be more scouts uh, kind of in a waiting list. So um, the scouts that volunteered, we would assign them a, a shift of like approximately an hour to two hours. And then they work from that time. And then when they left, a new scout would take its place. So there would always only be five scouts working even if uh, 15 scouts signed up. Got it, thanks. Okay, have, have you uh, seen uh, the type of metal sign that uh, this uh, pretty gritty tours is gonna manufacture? How yeah. thick is it? And is it acceptable to Mary and the parks team? Yeah, uh, I, believe, I believe Mary's seen it, right? Um, uh, it is. I've seen several examples of it, not the actual okay. sign. But yeah, we've we've made, um, there was a design that the Grave Concerns group and I picked out for this. Mm -hmm. It was the Union Cemetery example. However, I noticed that the, uh, the amount of words that they uh, wanted on their cemetery sign was a bit long. So I decided to go with that the Union Cemetery sort of style, but to have uh, spacing for two lines of lettering so that it fit within five feet. And the finish that they're gonna put on it is gonna be acceptable to have out in the weather all the time? Mm -hmm. No, it shouldn't rust. Uh, we're gonna be using uh, stainless steel for the lettering and the like the arch itself should be oxidized 
already to make it black. Okay. So there's, there's no concern that it's, re it's readable, right, Mary? I mean, yeah. with the letters, okay. Yeah, should be. Anything's gonna be more readable than what's out there right now. <laughs> Any other questions from the board? I just like- It's a great project. Oh. Sounds like he's got a plan. I just wanted to share a couple more things, Alex. Um, Alex has done a great job working with the different historic groups and gathering data and information and asking their input because they're really committed to this site. So I'm thankful for that, Alex, the work you did. Also, just so that you know, um, we received a grant from the state for $3,000. That's why he's able to do the, kind of a nicer, fancier sign than just you know putting up a new wood face with some engraving. So. That's nice that we'll be able to utilize that. We do have to spend it by the end of the year. So that's why we're on a little bit of a crunch. And then um, the other thing that um, I'm not sure you mentioned, Alex, but um, the reason he's sticking with the footprint that's there, as you know, in a historic area and especially close to a cemetery, you have to be quite careful whenever you disturb the ground. And so we're utilizing the footprint that's already there because it's already been disturbed. And then um, the one thing, Alex, I do want to throw out there that we'll want to incorporate with your um, training days, um, or maybe we'll work through you and then you can do the training in advance is we'll want to do a little bit of a cultural resources safety um, training so that you know what to do if for some reason uh, something was found out there. We call that an inadvertent discovery. And so we'll work with you so you have all the materials and the information uh, of what to do. So we'll help you with that. And um, uh, probably we could probably do that training before, um, uh, and then you could just, you know, we could write it down or you could write it down and then you'd have a script and then have materials so that you could share it with the different groups, especially if you're gonna shift people and you wanna make sure they're trained in advance. So they're safe, but also that the cultural resources are safe. Okay. Any other comments from the board? Do I have, uh, a motion to accept yeah. this project? I'll move, we approve it. I kind of got a preview from Linda when I saw her the other day, so I'm excited. I think it's a great project. Good, good to hear. Second. So Alan has a motion on the table. Second. We, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Alex, you're approved to move forward with this project. Great job and excited to see it out in the park. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I was uh, made aware that I would have to submit some uh, some paperwork by the by the end of the week, so I will get that in. Yeah, Alex, just work with Nikki and I so that we can either meet you or do some kind of an exchange so we can get signatures and whatever else you need. And if a uh, pretty nitty pretty gritty, um, they've worked with us before, but if they need a purchase order or something like that, we can help you with that. So that okay. they know that the funds are you're good for it, or we're good for it. <laughs> All right, good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next on the list is uh, budget for 2021-22. Mary. So, um, Alex, you can stay for the whole meeting, or if you're wanting to leave the meeting, you're welcome to do that as well. All right. Thanks for uh, tonight. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen this time. And can you see my screen? Yep. And we'll do this from the beginning. Oh, well, that's interesting. Okay. There it is. Huh, that's, that's a big screen. All right, so, um, so I'm going to st just start talking a little bit about our 2021-22 our budget update. And as you know, our mission is to, uh, let's see, let's talk a little bit about why we do a budget. Just so this just, does it feel like your screen's really full? It seems like this is just a little bit big, but maybe it's just me. Okay. So um, just as a reminder, you know, we do a two-year budget here in Lakewood and um, why we do the budget is, of course, um, so we have a financial roadmap. We know where we're going and what we want to accomplish during the next two years. 
Uh, and the two-year budget really helps us be able to plan better. It helps us to manage our partnerships and our expenditures so that we can uh, get a big bang for the buck. Also, we can spend more time getting work done and serving the community than spending a lot of time doing you know, administrative math. So um, anyway, it's a great roadmap to help us know where we wanna go. Um, of course, it addresses all the legal mandates, all the things that we have to do as a city and that we're really focused on revenue, not expenditures. We of course spend money when we hire staff and do different kinds of activities and, and improvements but we really can't overspend our um, resources. And so it's really based on the economy, sales tax, property tax, et cetera. So we really focus on the revenues that come into the city and we don't overspend. And then our department has a requirement to do cost recovery. And although you'll see a little bit later, we cover a big gamut of service area, the cost recovery is really for our parks and recreation um, services, not human services and, um, you know, maintenance and operations, et cetera. So we do have a cost recovery. Um, again, our, our budget's balanced. Uh, the city manager has worked really hard. We are lucky that we have an amazing finance department and that uh, they've helped us stay on track even during all this crazy time. We don't, you know, that especially with the pandemic and changes in uh, the economy. Um, we have a 12% reserve that's broken down uh, to make sure that we have the resources that we need. That's a council, council policy. And so of course our budget has to be balanced with those reserves in tow. Um, if we have special one-time money, we really use those for one-time projects. We don't, uh, you know, we don't try and uh, uh, spend down the reserves uh, to get to a point just so that we can continue operations. If we uh, are having any kind of financial challenges, the goal is to change the services that we're providing so that we can be uh, cost effective. And then of course, everything we do comes back to our council goals and strategies. We wanna make sure that we're meeting uh, their expectations and what they expect to happen in the city. So look at that rainbow, hope is in the future for what we do. So just as a reminder, um, parks, recreation, community services, our vision is to create a safe, vibrant and healthy community. Uh, that's our highest priority. We want to make sure that there's resources available to everybody. We want our citizens to be inspired and engaged and independent. And then also to, uh, for us to provide service, but also allow our citizens to provide service to others. So who are we? We are, um, our primary purpose is to, um, to maintain and improve city infrastructure. We enhance the beauty of Lakewood. We create uh, safe places to visit and extend the life of our city resources and investments. We're an essential service and we do this by maximizing use of our city resources. Our department's broken down into five different divisions. We have an administration division, recreation services, senior services and human services. We um, also have a, a operations and maintenance department that covers a lot of ground. We have a very lean organization but we think we do an excellent job implementing our city council goals and strategies, especially in the areas of regional partnerships, efficient services and accountability. So of course, what we do, people think parks and recreation is fun and games. You guys know it's a whole lot more, um, but we do a lot of different things. Of course, there's legal mandates and that is to maintain city infrastructure. That is to make sure that the investments of the city and the citizens of Lakewood are being well maintained so that they will last for a long time. We also do important services such as um, creating um, safety nets for our more vulnerable citizens, keeping things safe, clean, and functional, preserving and enhancing our natural resources, and then generating revenue to offset our program costs. And, and of course, what we do creates economic impact throughout our community. And then it, this is discretionary, but important. We provide a lot of programs, services, events, and activities for our community, all ages. So just a quick review, we have 25 FTEs in our department. Next year uh, in 2021, we'll only be actually employing 22 of those FTEs. Um, they are in the budget, but they're um, not gonna be uh, filled at this time because as you know, with um, the economy, the city didn't take as big of a hit as we thought we might. We were looking at a 20% cut, um, but we are um, looking at maintaining the, um, uh, direction of the city manager and the council is, is that we aren't filling open positions right now. We're not really hiring our part-time temporary seasonal staff. 
uh, and we're only really doing uh, no discretionary spending so that we can save our resources and um, be able to continue to provide the services as best we can. Uh, because we implemented this early in the game, like early March, April, we ended the year much better than we started. Uh, of course, lots of things were canceled, so we didn't spend money on certain things that we thought we were going to, but we also didn't generate the revenue that we were anticipating generating. So in the end, um, we'll be looking at um, 22 FTEs. Um, so um, while maintaining the uh, goals and strategies of the city council, we're also going to be looking at uh, implementing activities and elements within our current recently updated legacy plan. Um, we want to ensure that we're supporting youth, seniors, and families, supporting our most vulnerable citizens, and expanding opportunities for the community to gather. We're also looking at our work through an equity lens. We want to be sure that we're meeting the needs of our entire community, and that could be based on where an activity or a park is located. It might be the ability for someone to participate uh, because of physical um, abilities or financial opportunities. We want to make sure that our programs and services are equitable to all. We are also um, doing this by leveraging our community resources to enable us to accomplish an awful lot. Uh, I think we do a really good job of doing that with our partner groups, with sponsorships, with um, different kinds of donations and ways of being really nimble and resourceful. That's something that we promised at our council that we will do. We certainly learned that during this legacy plan or during this pandemic issue um, that we've had to be quite nimble and resourceful and we've done our best with, what the, with the resources that we've had. Cool. I'm going to share a little bit uh, regarding some of our accomplishments from last year and then our key areas for next year. Um, and we're going to strive to maintain the type of performance and the level of service that we have come to know with the resources that we have. Uh, we hope that we don't have to relive 2020 as it was quite a challenging year for our entire community. But as we enter 2021, we promise again to be bold and innovative. We are going to continue to find new partners and use preventive maintenance and best practices to get our job done. So here is a quick highlight of some of our, um, each of these divisions and some of our anticipated key projects. So we'll start off with administrative services. I'm just going to leave it on this slide and read to you for a little bit. This division oversees five city advisory boards. You're one of them. We supervise all the department personnel. We update our policies and planning documents, and we proactively seek partnerships, grants, and a variety of resources to support our city operations. Past accomplishments included, of course, we transferred Port Silicon Park from the state to the city. We survived um, the day-to-day, hour-to-hour, and often changes and craziness associated with this COVID pandemic, as well as we were able to update our legacy plan last year, or this year, pardon me. Uh, the extensive work we did on the legacy plan helped us score very well in our most recent grant cycles. And during the past few years, we've been very successful in receiving many capital project grants and community donations to enhance our parks. We've managed many capital projects and we're gonna to continue to do that in 21 and 22. Uh, in our human services department, um, the city manages human services, the grant program. We support Lakewood's Promise and our community collaboration. 19 and 20 accomplishments included a 20 year allocations pro uh, report regarding the allocations that the city's provided to some of our different community groups. We did a community's needs assessment, as well as we are being more strategic in the use of our various boards and commissions and funding programs to show the community that we have community-wide collective impact. Instead of just sort of a band-aid here and there, how does it all come together and really serve the citizens of Lakewood better? Um, in the past year, we've offset the administrative costs of this division by supporting a, a program called CHOICE. It's kind of a drug and alcohol prevention program uh, but we, it's really allowed us to work in the schools and to develop those relationships, as well as they have a really amazing advisory board that helps us again bring all of those resources together. We also were able to share some of the administrative costs from a census grant, which didn't quite do what we wanted to do because the big for, for the big focus of it was public outreach at all the amazing things that we do. And we really weren't able to do a lot of those programs and special events, but we were able to get some work accomplished. And then, um, of course, we've got this COVID CARES money coming in from a variety of different sources. So the human services person who works in our department has been working a lot with economic development and community development to make sure that those um, resources are going out to the different agencies that, um, and businesses and, and citizens that need them. Um, so we are in the final uh, stages of the reallocation process 
It's a very rigorous and, and competitive grant program. The city gives about $360,000 a year to Boys and Girls Club and LASA and Greater Lakes Mental Health, et cetera. So those recommendations are gonna be going to council, I believe on the 9th, uh, November 9th, and then the council will potentially take action that next meeting. <clears throat> and uh, you'll see those coming soon. Uh, key projects for 2122 for this world is they're gonna continue to develop and manage the different contracts. We're gonna manage our special programs and grants and continue to gather data to show the effectiveness of human services and the investment in liquid. Um, recreation services, this division works with a variety of partners to implement our out of school programs for youth, our arts and specialty programs, as well as our year round special events to bring the community together. Some of our accomplishments included a, a summer camp program. We did um, actually utilize the senior center this year for our summer camps. That was a really effective space since we really weren't able to use the schools and of course modified them for COVID and you know, safety, but uh, that was a great program to be able to continue to do. We've done after school programs, of course our farmer's market and previous to the COVID, COVID <clears throat> pandemic, we did a lot of seasonal events and of course summer concert series and a very, very successful summer fest program. This year we had to be quite creative and look at new ways to do things and examples included, we did drive-ins, drive-through events and pre-registered and staggered events to be sure that we were meeting the health and safety guidelines whatever they were for the day, because I got to tell you, they change regularly and uh, we try and adapt and we're going to continue to be innovative into 2021 and beyond. Um, so some of the things that we're really going to work on next year too is creating a new outdoor adventure program for all ages. You know, we've seen throughout this pandemic that people really are relying on our parks. Uh, they want to get outside, they want to um, play, and uh, so we're gonna be um, really focusing on getting people outdoors and how we can teach them how to be out, use the outdoors or utilize the outdoor spaces that we have and focus a little bit more on that. We're gonna redo our youth summit um, and start coordinating events at the Colonial Plaza, which was built last year, really haven't been able to use it this year, but we're gonna really hope, it's, hope to get out there and get the people in the community out there. And then of course, our special events and our farmer's markets. And then, we're going to be looking at starting to implement bits and pieces of a public art program. And of course, next year is the city's 25th birthday. So we'll be looking to you for ideas. I know we've been in, we're 25 years old, silver anniversary. Woo -woo. So we'll be focusing on that and looking at how we can celebrate all year long or put some special emphasis on some of our bigger projects to really honor the work that the city has done to become such a great community in 25 years. Um, in our senior services, this vulnerable population was probably the most impacted um, during this COVID year due to the nature of the pandemic. And we've worked really hard to stay connected with those folks. Um, we've done virtual and creative ways to get, to keep them um, <clears throat> engaged and to make sure they're safe because it's really a scary and lonely time for our older adults. Um, you know, we've used Zoom like crazy. Some of us love Zoom. Some of us are burned out with Zoom, but it's, it's been a great resource for that population. Um, we're going to be looking to maintain our current operations during the director's report. I'll tell you about a few changes that are happening at the senior center right now, but we hope that um, we'll continue to promote good health and build strong minds and social connections and help those older adults maintain their independence so that, you know, we can kind of reduce some of the negative impacts of isolation and the loneliness that COVID has caused. And then our maintenance and operation division. So this division is broken down into various work groups. We've got parks, facilities, and streets. By cross-training all of our staff as much as possible, we've been flexible with our resources. This group continues to maintain city infrastructure and um, so that we can maximize its use and extend the life of city investments. We also use our staff equipment and extra expertise to support all of our city programs and special events. Um, you know, we have a philosophy in our community, at, or at least in our division, our department, city work, city resources. You've got the skill and the equipment and the ability and it can be utilized for another purpose then let's do it right let's not be siloed let's work together and that's been really helpful um, during the early days of covid our teams were all out in the field they can't telework you can't do the work that they do from home and so they had to come in every single day and so they were strong and smart and kept safe and we haven't had any safety issues and uh, but you know they were the heroes too they were out there every day keeping the place safe and clean uh, when other folks didn't, weren't able to do that. 
safe, clean, and green, green is our motto and our priorities to make sure that everyone visiting our city, whether they're driving through our streets or enter, entering our buildings or using our parks, they have a good first impression of Lakewood. This team manages all city buildings and work sites to keep them clean and operating. Um, in 2020, we've made many, many changes to meet COVID safety protocols. We also provided a lot of support um, to information technology for various building upgrades and surveillance projects. And then our streets o &M teams, they focus on the right of way issues, which is pavement and shoulders, vegetation management, stormwater operations and maintenance of over 8,000 city street signs. <laughs> Work never stops for these folks. And in 2022, they inventoried and cleaned every sign in the city. They entered 51 of the 5,100 of them into our GPS system. And they converted 2,300 wooden sign poles to metal Telspar poles. Um, that's when you hit them, you know, you see a car hits a, metal, a wood sign and it cracks or breaks or falls down. It's really challenging and it's hard work to get it back up and dig a hole and put in cement and do that. So we've been replacing them with these metal poles. So they go and then they pop back up. Or if they crack, you can just replace them. And so it's, they're more efficient, they're safer, and they're easier to maintain. So uh, again, we've done 2,300 of those this year. And that was just the work of our street maintenance crew, uh, knowing that um, they could interchange that with the resources that we had. It wasn't even a special project. They also ensure that the safe flow of traffic happens throughout the city, whether it's dry and sunny, gray and wet, like right now, or covered with snow. Uh, they're out there all year long and working hard. This year, we have answered almost 2,311 reports. We do it in record time. We've picked up tons and tons and tons of garbage off the roadside when you see somebody dumping appliances and couches and crap like that. Very, very frustrating, but we go out there and pick it up and make the city look clean. In 2021 and 22, we're gonna contract with Pierce County to do our signal maintenance. <clears throat> we started doing that this year. Uh, well, actually, end of last year. Um, we had some changes in staff. That's two of our FTEs. So instead of hiring two FTEs, we're going to contract with Pierce County to maintain our traffic signals. And that's a whole work project in itself. But we've been, um, had really good success with them. And so we're going to continue that work. So, um, so anyway, um, just to emphasize, uh, the, we know how important our parks are to our community. Uh, business portions of the community have been closed, but we have been open for business. And so, um, we have uh, had people that have been flocking to escape fear and isolation, to boost their mental health, to add a recess period for some of these kids that are home virtually schooling and for a variety of other reasons. We really know people love our parks. And so we're gonna just continue to substantially grow um, or park use is substantially growing every year. And so we're gonna just continue to work hard to manage all those thousands of people who visit our sites each week to manage the local and national and sometimes international events that happen. Hopefully we'll be getting those soon and, um, and continue to do that work in our outdoor spaces. And then in our spare time, we also do park capital projects. We do facility capital projects. And so you can see, you know, Roy's Lake and American Lake, those are major projects that are gonna be happening in the next two years. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about our grants, but I think we're gonna be quite successful in that area. So we'll be able to get started on those big projects. We're gonna look at a new park entry sign project. Uh, you know, we have these beautiful gateways and then you go to a park and it's sort of that old cement monument type and they have the old logo on them. So we're gonna look at maybe updating those over the next two years. So that again, when people come to our sites, they have a really good first impression of our community. And then continue to look at our playgrounds and safety and if something's broken, we're gonna fix it. And then in the facility area, we're gonna be taking the fuel tank at Fort Stillicum Park, which is an above ground tank we're gonna move that over to the front street. It's an old system that we inherited from the county. So we've had that for many, many, many years. We're gonna move and put a new tank system and all the parking lot improvement things that need to go with it over to front street, which is our street maintenance facility, and then um, do some work in parking lots. So in summary, we uh, continue to create a safe and healthy and vibrant community for Lakewood. And we're gonna to continue to do that. Um, we're lucky that with all of the changes, we're not laying anybody off. Uh, we're just not hiring a couple of open positions, but we will be hopefully doing that in 2022 when things pick up. So, um, but other than that, we're looking at full speed ahead for 21-22. So do you guys have any questions? Any questions by the board? No questions by the board. I get the feeling this wasn't her first time to show this. Okay. I couldn't, I couldn't you did great, Mary. It's, it's really, it's a good presentation to show where you are. 
I actually did kind of put it together this morning, but thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. I have a the information. I bet you'll use it again. It's good. Yeah, it's hopefully. a good presentation of what's happening. I have a question, so. Mary. Yes, Mike. I use that road that goes from Ponders to the main gate at McCord all the time, and you were talking about picking up trash. Mm -hmm. No exaggeration. The other day, four sofas, three mattresses, uh, a couple of chairs, a couple of end tables, uh, a grocery cart, and a pile of shingles that somebody had taken off their roof. Is it to the point where we put up a, a game camera or something, or uh, you know, get the community people to you know do a little surveillance and uh, find these people? Because this this is a daily thing. Yeah, it's in, there are certain hot spots. We did a big study. Gosh, I think it was. You know, it could have been middle of this year, could have been end of last year. Life is sort of blurry right now, but we did a big study and found the hotspots because we can track them with 311 so we can do maps of emphasis. A lot of times it's towards the end of the month because people get kicked out or moved out of apartments. And so then they toss their stuff on the side of the road. We've actually had contractors where we've gotten pictures of them from citizens where they pull over throw all of their shingles or their drywall or crap on the side of the road because they think nobody's going to notice it and then they drive off. It's really hard to catch people in the act. Even when citizens see that and they may have seen the license plate number, it's like, well, was it the person who's registered to the car that owns it? What was the person look like? It's really, really hard. And so, um, and I, you know, we have set up some cameras in some areas. We've tried to do some things to make it less easy to drop those things off but i'm not kidding you probably of those 2311 calls i'd say easily close to a thousand of them are garbage mm -hmm. and appliances and sofas and so yeah. Yeah. We, we have to we pick that up and and so i don't know if you went by there again michael if you saw that it was, had been picked up but really if you see that we would love for you to do a 311 because that puts it in our system you know we can't be everywhere all the time we try and get out there specifically on Fridays is sort of our loop, but we do it on Tuesdays sometimes as well. well I guarantee you, and I, I take that road quite often because I go out to the base quite often. I, have, I I don't recall ever taking that road in the last couple of years. I did not see something dumped on the side of the road. Yeah. Well, next time, pull over, get a cup of coffee, and then you get your camera out and you watch people and see what you can find for us. That'd be great. Okay, will do. Yeah. Thanks, Michael. But anytime you do guys see something out there that's that are signed down or stuff on the side of the road, if you do the 311 app or just even call and leave a message to Nikki or send an email, we'll get it to the right person so they can get out there and get that taken care of. Because it just looks crummy. And, you know, I just don't, I just don't know what, I don't know whose mother taught them that. <laughs> then, you know, that you can, it's okay to drive down the road and throw your garbage on the side, especially something like that. It drives me crazy. Well, on that line, the city cleanup day that they're doing finally again really does get a lot of stuff up. Mm -hmm. I have a trailer. I collect stuff from the end of Phillips Road by the trailhead there to Chambers Bay, and it's always half full of junk that people just dump. So yeah, that, that program does clean up the city of things that might end up on the streets. Thank you so much for, for doing that. And there are a lot of people in our community that do adopt a street programs with us that Nikki sets up bins and they go out there. I know Lions Club does that. And um, some of our other groups, they get out there and we really are thankful for that. That helps a lot. Um, you know, we want our community to look good. And um, yeah, I, there aren't a lot of, there aren't, it's hard to catch those folks. Every once in a while we do, so. Mary, can you uh, give us an update on uh, the schedule for the budget adoption by the city council? Sure. Um, council will be, I believe, approving that. Um, is Linda Farmer on the phone still? I think that they're going to be doing taking action on the second or second, which is this coming Monday, because they've had their budget conversations, or they might have one more conversation, mm -hmm. and they'll take action on the 16th, which is um, the second meeting in November. I believe that's when they're taking action. Council member Farmer. That, yeah, the public hearing, yeah. there's public hearings on the 2nd, possibly the 9th, and then um, final vote is scheduled for the 16th. The council could um, decide they need more, more talk, but it's um, currently scheduled for the 16th. Great. Thank you. Um, Mary, do you want to continue with the director's report? Sure, I am looking at it right now. Can you see my director's report? 
Yes. Okay, let's see if I could figure out how to get it big. Because um, I'm looking at it on the screen and you can see it because all I can see right now is my la, 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 la. Your tax bar, your task bar. Yeah, I'm trying to get to my tax. There's one up here that's, let's figure out, let me see if I can get it over here. Oh, there we go. Um, that's, I don't know why that's there, but it looks like you can see most of it, right? Yep. <laughs> Yep. Can you see? Okay, because on my big screen, for some reason, this one's not there. It's okay. Well, you can see it. So that's the most important thing. So um, I'm going to give you a quick, let's see, is that helpful? Sure. Better? There you go. Okay, so um, that's very strange. How do you get rid of this? That's a top paragraph. I don't know. I'm not the high tech person. Probably need these youth council people to come help me. Okay. So um, let's talk a little bit about our capital projects. We have so many capital projects going on and so many in the wings. We've been working really hard. So Springbrook Park expansion, we're going to be, um, uh, you know, we received a big grant from the state, almost um, $750,000 to do some park expansion and to do some restoration of Clover Creek. So that is going to be happening for the properties that we purchased after the last, you know, with Conservation Futures money and some other resources. And then um, uh, also there were a few things in our master plan that we weren't able to accomplish with the budget we had last time. So we're going to, we're starting work on that right now. We're finding out all the things that we have to do and all the things that we might do, um, you know, like curb gutter and sidewalk and uh, some restoration elements. You know, there's, there's some flood control ponds on the lower Springbrook area. So we have to just find out what we can do. And then we're going to be meeting this Saturday which is Halloween. We're gonna be meeting out at Springbrook Park. They do, a, the mobile food bank goes there every Saturday, three out of the four Saturdays of the, of the month. So we're gonna meet on Saturday out there and just talk to people that are coming and see how they're using the park and what their dreams are and what they, what they like, what we did and what, what they'd like to see changed or what they'd like to see added. So we're gonna do some public outreach. And you know, we are normally really big on pub public outreach. Uh, we haven't been able to do as much, of course, with COVID and um, all the restrictions and safety restrictions. But with that particular neighborhood and that particular population, they are really not gonna just zoom in on a Saturday or a Tuesday or something for a meeting. So we're gonna go out to the people. We'll keep good distances. We'll have some treats for the kids. Um, since it's Halloween, I'll probably wear cat ears and a cheetah suit, but um, we will uh, do our best to talk to the folks out there and get their feedback. They were super engaged when we redid the park three or four years ago, five years ago, and they um, were thankful that we asked their opinion and then shocked that we came back and built it. So we wanna continue that relationship with them. So we're adding two gateways. Council will be looking at that next week uh, at their council meeting We um, to approve the contract. We have it budgeted. So um, we did a bid process and so We'll be adding two gateways. They'll, they're in, conjunction, in connection with the JBLM WashDOT um, I-5 improvements down there. So one of them will be in the roundabout that's by Camp Murray. And then one of them will be in a roundabout that's out, off of Berkeley. Um, technically it's the end of Thorn Lane, but off Berkeley in the Woodbrook Business Park area. And so we'll be doing two of our gateways there. And then um, we're also going to be doing that service club sign, finally, getting that installed. Um, and so we're going to do a three for one. So we're going to be having the, all of that happen late November and hopefully in December we'll be done. Um, Chambers Creek Trail, as I mentioned last time, um, we have two phases to that. Phase one is the bridge over from Phillips Road to Kobayashi Park. We have that funded. We're working on the permitting for that. The phase two, which basically connects it from that bridge area all the way down, which is another you know two miles of trail. We're having some alignment problems um, on how we can actually get from here to there. Um, we have to sort of cross back and forth and it was like a million extra dollars than what we had budgeted. And so I don't have an extra million dollars, neither does uh, UPA, uh, University Place or Pierce County. So we're working on trying to look at, is there another alignment that we can make that we don't have to build as many boardwalks and bridges and things. So we're, we're continuing to work on that. But phase one should continue forward and we should be doing that sometime next year uh, once we get all the permits done. Um, Harry Todd, we're under construction. I don't know if you've been by there or out there. The park's closed, so maybe you haven't. But, or the, the waterfront area is closed. The park area is still accessible. 
um, but um, it's under construction and that's going fine. Um, the bathroom's been demoed and, you know, pathways and shorelines are being graded. And anyway, there's a lot of work. They redid the bulkhead. So there's a lot of work happening out there. And so that'll continue as best we can between now and March, April. So that should be done in time for next summer. Uh, Angle Lane South, that's the part down from uh, the War Wahop Lake parking lot down to Elwood, down at the far end of the dog park. That is under construction. The, com the parking lot's complete. There was a little bit of re um, paving, not repaving, relining we had to do by the handicapped spots. I think we figured that out. Um, but so we may do two substantial completions so we can open that parking lot before the bathroom's done. Mm -hmm. Bathroom shell is there. It's primed. Uh, we're just finishing that up. And then, of course, we'll be bringing in my big swing, which will be at the overhang. If you've been there, it looks a little ski chalet right now, <laughs> but we'll have it finished up. It's going to match the pavilion. So we only have to have one big gallon of paint in our storage container. And um, so that that should be happening and should be completed by the middle end of November. Uh, we are working with the Nisqually tribe on that. Uh, that's been a real relationship we've worked hard to build and um, it just, it's a real long process communicating and getting all of that to happen, but we're doing our, we're going to be consistent and they'll be providing wood for benches. Um, and there'll be sort of big, long beam like benches and some seating areas and they'll have some Nisqually symbols and some words, maybe some poetry that'll be engraved on there. And so they're going to be doing that work for us. And um, we applied for some of their cultural grant money to see, but otherwise we'll build it into the project. Uh, Wards Lake. So we purchased some property down by Wards Lake. We're working on that property behind the um, the Lakewood Cinema. Uh, that area continues to be a challenge with wooded areas and homeless people and people hanging out there that uh, don't have anything else to do with their lives. And so, um, you know, we work with our police department, our mental health people to try and get that cleaned up. But I think once we can do our big improvement project out there, really put in some pathways and our dog park and our pump track and all those other fun things, We'll open that up and get more people in there doing positive things and maybe, you know, shoo some of that riffraff out. The pavilion is under construction as well right now. We're putting in the warming kitchen and two restrooms. Uh, so we'll finish that up and that'll be just a really nice facility for the park to have out there to do concerts and private events and public events and classes. And maybe we'll have a meeting out there when it's all done, when we're all able to be around each other again even though we could probably socially distance pretty well in there with just us. So, but we'll get you in there so you can enjoy that when you can see the finished project. We are going to be using um, some reclaimed wood from an old, you know, the barns in the barns, we have beams and wood and things from old barns and buildings that have knocked down. So we're going to take a bunch of that wood and plane it and use it for, um, you know, decorative walls, finishes in the kitchen and in the bathroom. So we're kind of excited about that. I was pointing at the beams today that they were going to pick out. Um, Sealy Lake, we've been working on that. They came up with some design options. Um, mostly we're looking at um, stormwater retention, habitat preservation, and then how do we access it in a safe manner? And so there's some pockets back there. So we're working with Pierce County on that and uh, cleaning that area up as well. And then I told you the service club sign is gonna go up here in the next several weeks. So that's pretty exciting. So that's just our capital project. You know, we have one half-time person that we work with <laughs> Uh, that helps us manage all of these things. And so we, uh, again, are being as efficient as we can with pretty limited resources. Um, we mentioned park grants last time, and I just want to give you a heads up that the scores, we were, we got the um, outcome of the scores. I think that they were due a week or so after we met last time. And we scored really, really well on all of our grants. So I think we're going to get all of them. <laughs> so um, with American Lake Park, you know, we have like a million and a half dollar project that we proposed. And it looks like we should probably, we scored number six out of 80 grants for um, a $500,000 grant. And then um, we were the number two in the state for ALEA. And that's another $500,000. So they can match each other. So that's good. We'll be able to um, get a million dollars for that. So that's wonderful. Wards Lake, um, that's a project that's about almost a $2 million project. So we were uh, six out of 24 for Land and Water Conservation Fund. Um, for the local parks, again, we scored 10 out of 80. And so we're at 500,000. For the pump track, we scored 12 out of 37. And then the L we were um, asked to apply for the Land and Water Conservation Fund, which could be up to $960,000. Um, it's a federally 
funded program. We really won't know till sometime between November, probably closer to March, because who knows what the feds are doing right now. But anyway, if we get that one, we will not we will not be eligible for the 500. So we we will get either a $900,000 grant or a $500,000 grant. We are not we can't have both, but if we get one, we will keep it. So that's cool. And then for Fort Sulcum Park, you know, with our artificial turf infield, um, we are working with Pierce College to. Uh, they want to take one of our fields and build a home field for the college, which they started their program there. They've moved all around and now they're coming home. So we had some time. So we applied for another $350,000 um, and we scored high on that grant as well. So we'll be able to um, actually accomplish that project. We really didn't have as much as we needed to do for infields, but now we will be able to do that. So that's exciting too. So yay us, right? Um, so those are the grants. Okay, so the Senior Activity Center. So our Senior Activity Center has been closed since March due to COVID, right? We closed it because we wanted everybody to be safe. Everything was shut down. Well, as we've slowly been able to open things up and implement things, we really can't open the Senior Center until it's really much safer. Phase three, maybe even phase four. That's our more vulnerable population. So in the meantime, we've done a lot to try and stay connected with our older adults. We have a weekly, we've been doing a weekly phone tree since March to make sure that somebody is calling every single member, hundreds of people um, every, every week, just again, to make sure that people are connected. We've been doing walks, you know, five at a time, socially distance, wear a mask. But we've been doing walks, we've done some virtual programs, we've done some happy hours and just some support groups, like we have an Alzheimer support group that we meet once a month. Uh, staff's been facilitating those through Zoom. And then um, what happened was Pierce County came to the city and said, hey, uh, you can't use this space anyway. Can we borrow the space that you lease from us so we can do some temporary courtrooms? They have hundreds and hundreds of civil cases, not criminal cases, but civil cases that are backed up and they haven't been able to do the court cases. So everybody's been fussing. So they're creating three temporary courts. One in our area, one upstairs, which is county area, and then one at Raymond Hall. So they basically kicked everybody out of the senior center. All the park planning people from the county got moved to emergent, or ESA, uh, Environmental Services, you know, over there by Chambers Bay Golf Course. And basically they get, had, our people had two days to pack up and leave, which was quite traumatic for them because <laughs> they have been, they built that place from scratch, right? So it's temporary, um, but, um, Anyway, so they're moved to City Hall. They're continuing their work from City Hall. Um, but um, we really didn't think that we were going to get that center open before December and probably not till February. So, so anyway, so it's a good use of resources. They are basically not, we're not paying rent. So we're saving, you know, could be saving close to $20,000 for the rest of the year. Um, so that's our, and our lease expired in December. And so they could tell us that we're not, we can't come back, but um, they know our intention is to extend the lease if we can. We want to do it for two more years, even though we are going to be looking around to see is there a better space for us. It's a really old building. You know, it's mixed in with some other interesting activities back there. So, you know, maybe we'll look around and find a better space. There's a lot of commercial property out right now that's available with all this virtual um, activity and with all this um, remote learning and things. There might be space available for us somewhere else that we can still provide those programs. So we'll check our options. We did that three or four years ago. Those of you that have been on the board for a while, we did those a few years ago and um, we realized there just wasn't a space that we could afford that had all of the amenities that we had at the community center. But we're going to look again because, you know, there could be some better space. But in the meantime, we're going to extend our lease so that we have the opportunity to go back in there. And our older adults miss us and they miss our, our senior center a lot. So. So that's happening. And then just a whole bunch of, you know, even with the pandemic, there's tons of opportunities for do things. You know, we've done Zoom meetings with scout groups. We've facilitated conferences. We've met with boards. Um, we've had virtual events. So, um, you know, we're keeping busy as you are as well. And let's see, what else is on my little list here? Oh, just to note that we have, um, Several projects coming up. I'm not sure what all is going to be on our November agenda. Um, we'll give you some updates. Um, and these are the things that were left over from uh, the end of the year. And um, then, you know, we have all these Christmas activities. We're going to be doing virtual tree lighting. 
Uh, we're working on that. We're doing some filming now, and then we'll be doing that at the December 2nd, no, 7th, I think it is, December 7th meeting. The city council will virtually light the tree. Ah! And then we will do our reverse parade on December 12th. That 6 to 8 p.m., it's a drive through so we will have the floats staged, and you will drive through the parade, so no walkthroughs, just drive throughs so we're going to be doing that at the town center, so that's my report. Thank you, Mary. Any questions by the board? Any comments by the board? I have one, Mary, uh, frequently mm -hmm. go over to Fort Skellicum Park early uh, in the morning and uh, Elwood and that new parking lot looks really good. I like the landscape that was installed. It looks really good. It looks like it's gonna really function well. And of course the restroom looks nice too. Thank we you. Nice job. Good, thank you. I wanna say your reverse parade is a really cute idea. Good, thank you. Yeah, somebody did real well on that. Yeah. Sally, of course, she's our creative brain behind all these fun things. So, yeah. Well, you know, we've really been growing that event over the last few years. And so um, hopefully people will still get lots of folks that come out and want to be afloat as well as participate. So and be afloat. Well, you know, stage afloat. Yeah. And what we'll do is at the end, there'll be a Santa. We only allow one Santa at our parade. So we'll have a Santa at the end on the city sleigh and then we'll have reindeer and snowmen and elves handing like treat bags to the kids as they go through. So everybody will get a little treat. Good, great. Yeah. All right, uh, I'd like to adjourn the meeting if, anybody, if everybody's done. <laughs> Do I have a motion? Alan? You got a, a thumb and a motion. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you. All I in favor? So. I think Sylvia um, second it. Okay, thank you. Good night, everybody. Be safe.